Having trouble winning games in Madden 23? The answer might be as simple as an adjustment you're not making. Ah! See ya! As there are several easy adjustments that players don't know about that give them a huge advantage. So if you're struggling on offense, defense, or special teams and want to see some simple adjustments that will take your game to a whole new level, run away, run away. stick around after the intro. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Adjustments is one of the most important things when it comes to winning games in Madden 23, as the right adjustments can give you a huge advantage against your opponent. But Madden gives you so many options that it can be hard to know which ones to make. Whether it's in-game adjustments, coaching adjustments, roster adjustments, or pre-play adjustments, it can all be overwhelming and hard to know which ones work the best. So with that in mind, in today's video, I'm going to go over six quick and easy adjustments that give you the biggest advantage when it comes to winning games in Madden 23. But before I do, if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button and let me know in the comment section as it really helps out the video and the channel and if you guys want to see some money plays make sure to check out my ebooks as all you have to do is click the links in the description or the top pin comment to have them sent to the email of your choice for instant download first off i'm going to go over special teams with a simple substitution in your death chart that will make a huge difference in your return game in mad most players rarely kick to the actual return man on kickoffs as most players don't want to give you a chance for a kick return touchdown as players typically use their fastest player as a return man Instead, most players play it safe, electing to kick to the fullback, as this position is usually occupied by a slow backup tight end or a slow fullback, if your team even has one at all, which usually results in a poor return at best. You can still have a good return man at this position, however, with one simple adjustment, and that is to go into your death chart and put your fastest running back at the starting fullback spot. This will ensure that you will at least have a return man capable of having enough speed for longer returns, and if you find a seam, you will have enough speed to take the kickoff to the house. See ya. As an added bonus, this will also give you a fast player on kickoff coverage as the fullback spot is also on the side of the field where you do your fullback kicks yourself. When I kick off, I always switch to the same fullback as it will allow me to sprint into coverage before any other player, usually resulting in a much shorter return for my opponent. Next up, I'm going to go over offensive adjustments, starting with a hot route that most players rarely use enough, and that is the fade route. Most people don't know that this route is much more effective than the streak adjustment that most people use. The reason for this is the release, which you can see in the route animation. When you put a receiver on a streak, he is programmed just to go straight forward, which plays right into the hands of what the defense wants you to do whether the defense is man or zone. When in man coverage, especially in man press, this allows the defensive back in coverage the ability to press and control the receiver at the line of scrimmage, which will ensure that the defensive back can stay closer to the receiver throughout the play. When in zone, slot cornerbacks and safeties will often zone chuck or try to alter where the receiver is going by pushing them to the area closer to where the deep coverage defenders are defending, which can both slow you down and also mess up the play. By putting a receiver on a fade, however, it will help with both both of these coverages. When facing man press, a lot of times this will allow the receiver to get outside of the pressing cornerback and often pass them deep, which can result in big plays, whether there's a safety over the top or not. Against zone coverage, this adjustment will often avoid the zone chucking defender that is needed to make certain zone schemes work like cover two or cover three. If the receiver isn't zone chucked properly and slowed down or redirected, it can also result in wide open blown coverages on the back half of a lot of defenses. Next up, I'm going to go over defense, starting with coaching adjustments, as this is one of the biggest areas of advantages you can have in the entire game. I also made an entire video about just this topic, so if you guys want to see more information about this, I will have a link in the description as well as an on-screen pop-up at the end of the video, so stick around for that. The first one I'm going to go over is ball in the air defense. This might be the most important one here. There are two choices, and it really depends on what results you are trying to get. If you want to force more incomplete passes, you're going to want to set this to play receiver, as this will make the defender attack the receiver more often, which will trigger a lot more knockout animations like this, which will make it harder for your opponent to complete passes, especially in tight coverage. In the past, I would use this all game, but I noticed since the last patch that if I use this setting alone, you get a lot less interceptions. So if you want to get more takeaways, I find the best setting to use right now is to play ball for obvious reasons as the defender will go for more interceptions instead. The next most important coaching adjustment is zone drops, as this can help in pass defense and run defense as well. There are really two different options that I find work best for both flats and curl flats based on what you're trying to stop from your opponent and what kind of defense you'd like to run. 
First, I will start with flats. If you run cover two zone, this can change, but if you run any other defense and use flats to supplement coverage, I find that five yards is the best to cover short routes like drags and flats, while flats set to zero are best for stopping the run and covering routes behind the line of scrimmage like swing routes to the running back. For curl routes, I like to set these for deeper pass plays as you always wanna have more than one option. For this, I use either 20 or 25. The slants usually get open at about 20 yards where most other deep crossing routes get open at about 25. Now that we have our adjustments set, I will go over some easy pre-snap adjustments that you should be making just about every play. The first and probably most important starts with the defensive line, as there are two very easy adjustments that you can make for better run defense and pass defense. For better run defense, all you have to do is pinch the D-line, which is D-pad to the left and down, and depending on what defense you use, this can bring all the linemen together to take away any inside run lanes. Doing this is like most things in Madden as it will give you better run defense but it will also make your pass defense worse as this adjustment will make your edge rushers easier to contain and give your interior linemen much less room to work. This adjustment will also make it easier for quarterbacks to scramble outside the pocket as the ends will no longer have outside leverage on the tackles to shed once the quarterback leaves. For better pass rush you do the exact opposite by spreading the defensive line which will once again make your run defense weaker as you will now have wider lanes inside so make sure that you only do this in obvious passing situations. To do this, all you have to do is hit the D-pad to the left and up, and this will allow more space and better leverage for your linemen to get around blocks and better contain running quarterbacks. It also helps to use this with the next adjustment, which is guessing pass, as both of these combined will give you the best pass rush and pass defense possible. Normally, your pass rushers and players in coverage won't commit to either run defense or pass defense until their play recognition kicks in once they figure out the play, making them slower to react. So by guessing pass, you remove that delay and they go right into either full coverage mode or full pass rush mode from the start of the play. So pass rushers will pin their ears back and go straight for the quarterback instead of doing things like maintaining run lanes and biting on play actions. And coverage units will play the pass from the start of the play as well. Just make sure that you only use this in obvious passing situations once again as guessing wrong can have several negative effects on your run defense like getting pancake blocked more easily and your run pursuit will be much slower from defenders. The last tip is for coverage, and this is another one you should use just about every single play, especially if you run man coverage, and that is shading. Most people think that shading is only something that you do in zone coverage, since they can see the play art change when they make the adjustment, but it has an even better effect in man coverage, even if you don't see it in the pre-snap play art. To shade man coverage, all you have to do is hit the Y or triangle button, and then the right stick in whatever direction you want to shade coverage. Once again, shading in a certain direction will make you weaker everywhere else, so if you don't have a safety over the top, shading underneath is a dangerous idea as it will let a simple streak run right past your cornerback. This is why most players will shade over the top in man zero and shade underneath in cover two man. You could also shade inside for better coverage against crossing routes like drags and slants or outside for better coverage against outbreaking routes like outs and zig routes. So that's that's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this or you enjoyed the content, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, if you guys want to see more related content to this video like the coaching adjustments video that I talked about earlier, I will have links of them popping up on screen now. So if you want to see them, I'm sure it'll help out your game. Other than that, thanks for watching Mad Money Shit Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.